Hello and welcome to the next video. If you've ever been working with Spring Boot and configuration properties before, then you probably saw that by default, Spring Boot does not fail when an environment variable is missing. So in this video, I would like to show you four ideas on how to solve this issue. But before we start, a friendly reminder that you can join my newsletter where I share interesting updates and also materials related to Kotlin and backend development. With all of that said, let's get to work. As the first step, let's take a look at the example Spring Boot application so that we'll see what exactly the problem is. Firstly, let's navigate to the application YAML file. Main, resources, application. So what we would like to do here is to define a new property which will use the environment variable passed to our program. So let's call it example some property and in order to fetch the value from the environment variable we'll use some variable name so following let's introduce the configuration properties class let's navigate to kotlin main package new kotlin class file and i would like this to be a data class and i'll call it example configuration properties in order to make use of our yum file we need to use the configuration properties annotation configuration properties annotation additionally right here we started with the example and we would like to read these properties if we would have them multiple then we would also want to read them so we need to specify the example as the prefix and to do that let's get back to the example configuration properties our annotation prefix and the prefix will be example nextly let's introduce val sum property and i would like this to be a string value non-nullable so what happens here spring boot recognizes the camel case sum property and matches that with a kebab case sum dash property from our application yaml but before this happens we need to introduce another config class i'll call it simply config and we need to enable configuration properties so let's hit here once again kotlin class slash file and this time this will be a simple class i'll call it config we can delete brackets i'll annotate that with configuration first and nextly enable configuration properties annotation and we need to specify which class we would like to enable so example configuration properties and class so with all of that being done let's use a class which will utilize our configuration properties so let's hit here once again new kotlin class and i'll call it some component of course this is just an example so the names will be a bit dummy component and i would like to inject private vol configuration properties and refer to our example configuration properties lastly i'll introduce an int function fun init and would like what i would like this function to do will be to simply print on configuration properties and the sum property value of course in order for this function to be run after the sum component bin is created i can annotate that with post construct so finally we can get back to our main class and run it so we will see what happens when an environment variable is missing let's wait for a second Finally, when we run our application without the sum variable environment variable, we'll see the following output right here. The placeholder is put. When I get back to the configuration properties, I see that this value is non-nullable. And what I would expect by default is to Spring Boot application simply fail whenever it is missing. Unfortunately, this is not the case. And as we can see, Spring simply defaulted to the name of the environment variable, which is missing. In some cases, this might be a bit dangerous because the code will compile, the application will run, and without appropriate checks, 
we cannot figure out whether the actual value was passed or the placeholder. In contrary, I will show you that when I pass the environment variable, it will work like a charm. So let's copy the name of the environment variable, navigate to the configuration, let's hit edit, and in IntelliJ, we can add environment variables right here, plus sign, the name of the variable, and my value, double E, whatever. Let's hit OK, rerun the application, and this time I would expect that it will inject the actual value. So we can see this might be a bit problematic. Moreover, at the moment when I'm recording that, there is no built-in way to enforce Spring Boot application to fail whenever the environment variable is missing. So let's see what we can do to achieve that. As the first solution, or again, rather workaround, let's add the Spring Boot Starter validation to our project. So firstly, let's navigate to Build Gradle KTS, double click, and as the implementation, I would like to add the Spring Boot Starter validation. So Ctrl plus D in order to duplicate this line, org Spring Framework Boot, this matches, Spring Boot and Starter validation. Let's sync the project and we must wait until the library will be downloaded. Nextly, let's instruct Spring that it should default to the blank string value whenever our environment variable is missing. So let's get back to the yum file and right here in order to specify the default value we can use this. So whenever some variable will be missing we will inject empty or rather blank string. After that, let's modify our example configuration properties. So let's open up it. Let's add a new annotation, validate it, validate it. And we would like to do right here, annotation, field, not blank. And if you are trying to understand what it does, so in Kotlin, if you'd like to annotate the Java field, we must use the field annotation this way. If you would like to learn about this and many more, then check out my Kotlin course. Link you can find in the video description. Before I rerun my application, I must delete the environment variable. So let's get back right here. We can go here, delete, OK. OK once again. So let's rerun the app down. Excellent. We can see that process finished with exit code one. We can additionally see that there is a message indicating what exactly happened. And although this is not so descriptive, it informs us where we should refer example configuration properties and which validation failed. So to summarize, this solution is not ideal, but it does its job. And it is neat. Not only does the application not start, but also whenever the environment variable for our configuration properties is missing, we will see a meaningful message that will speed up the debugging process. Another solution for our problem does not require any additional dependencies added to our project. Instead, we'll implement the application runner interface. So let me create a my application runner class, Kotlin class, my application runner. Again, firstly, let's annotate that with component annotation and as I mentioned we must implement application runner. The next step control plus I and let's import the run function. What I would like this class to do is to specify manually I will hard code this time some required variables and we will check whether all of them are placed in the context. So firstly, let's introduce some companion object. Companion object. If you are from Java, I would call it something similar to a static class, static property. Private val required variables equals set of, and let's specify string value sum variable. Following, let's introduce our custom exception and I'll call it missing environment variable exception. Class missing and var 
run command variable exception. I would like there to provide some variable name as an argument, name of a string value. And this one should implement, sorry, extend runtime exception. Let's provide some meaningful message that application failed to start. Missing environment variable. Variable, I can't write, I must admit, Control alt plus L to format the code. And what I would like to do inside the run function is to check whether all variables put right here are accessible from our program. So in order to do that, let's go with required variables. For each variable, I would like to go with system, get env, and let's provide the name. So what this function does is nothing else than fetching the value of the environment variable by a given name. So in Kotlin, if this will be null, I would like to throw missing environment variable exception, and I would like to provide the name of our environment variable. So this time, let's rerun the app once again, hit run. You can do that with Shift plus F10 also on Windows. And this time we can see that failed to execute application runner. And this solution gives us a bit more control and allows us to customize the behavior better. Would we like to log an error or maybe send an other request? No problem. With a few lines of code, we can easily achieve that. Nevertheless, with this approach, we introduce a new separate place in the code. We need to remember every time we want to add a new environment variable. And this might be easily forgotten in bigger projects. So as the next step, let's take a look at the approach with conditional annotation, which slightly reduces the chance of forgetting about additional checks. So let's add a new class called required and variable condition. New Kotlin class required and variable condition. What this class must do is implement condition interface. Again, control plus I and IntelliJ will inject on the necessary function override. Similarly, I'll add the companion object, companion object, and I will put their private val required variables. Again, this will be a set of and some variable. Excellent. So what I would like this function to do will be pretty similar to the previous approach where we search where a variable is present, but we can see that this one requires a Boolean instead. So instead of throwing the exception, we'll actually return either true or false values. So firstly, let's delete this line and introduce a new variable. Vol is environment variable missing. Environment variable missing and what I would like to do will be go with required variables and now any which will check whether any of the following conditions applied to our list is true and viron viron meant variable name I would like to explicitly uh, provide the name for the argument val is missing and now what we'll do will be the same as previously system get env and as the name i will specify the environment variable name and in order to check whether it is missing i will simply check whether the value is null following i would like some logging so if is missing i would like to print out that the environment variable is missing so print variable environment variable name is missing. Excellent. Lastly, we'll return is missing. So again, whenever any of that is missing, this will be true. Lastly, when we'll be returning the value from our function, 
I would like to return the opposite of is environment variable missing. So is environment variable missing? Of course, we must specify the return explicitly. Before we rerun our application, we must navigate to the config class and annotate that with conditional annotation. So let's go here, conditional, and let's specify our condition. So required environment variable condition. Of course, we need to use class instead. Control plus L to format. Let's hit Shift plus F10 to run the application and see what happens here. Excellent. Application failed to start. And although this solution may not be so readable at first glance right here, uh, when we scroll up a bit, we'll see that variable, some variable is missing, which gives us a message. But additionally, when we start debugging, we'll navigate to the conditional class and we'll see what exactly happened right here. Excellent. So as the last one, and please treat that as a bonus, I will show you the approach with using value instead. There is no doubt that configuration properties help us write cleaner code and better organize configuration in our code base. Moreover, we can effortlessly add new values to the project with this approach. Whenever we would like to add something, we will navigate to application YAML, add a new property, then inside the configuration properties and add a new property right here. However, instead, we should consider using value annotation. So what I would like to do now will be simply go to the sum component. Instead of configuration properties, I would like to inject some property. So private val sum property. Again, this will be a string value. So this time, instead of referring to the configuration properties object, we'll print out the value instead. And nextly, we'll use the value annotation. So value. And this annotation allows us to specify the path where we would like to refer the value from. So let's use this. What we would like to do will be escape the dollar sign and now refer to our yum file. So example, some property. Excellent. So this time we could completely get rid of the configuration and configuration properties files. I can delete even now. Let's hit delete, delete anyway. Let's go to config, same here. Let's rerun the application once again. We will see that the same will be happening here. So let's check what's the message here. We can see that Spring Boot could not resolve placeholder sum variable in value sum variable. Ideally, I would like to see this whenever I use configuration properties. This is not the case. We all are already know that. But as you can see, whenever you use the value annotation, this will be working out of the box. So let's double check. Let's navigate to the environment variables. Let's add a new one. Sum value, double A. OK. Shift plus F10 to run the application. And this time it will start successfully. We can see that it was printed out. And basically that's all for this video. I hope that you will pick something for you from these four approaches. And if you figure out something even better or some drawback of any of these solutions, then let me know in the comment section. If you enjoyed this material, then don't forget to subscribe to my channel.